This is a video on how to read a dialog APL code. How do you read an expression like this one here? In V14, dialog introduced trains of functions. A train is a sequence of functions in isolation. Isolation means that the functions follow each other and they don't have an argument. It is just a series of functions together. This is a train of two functions called an ATOP. Let's see why. As usual, we read from right to left. The first symbol is IOTA, the index generator function. The second symbol is JOT, the compose operator. Compose accepts two arguments. Each may be a function or an array. The third symbol is diéresis, another operator named each, which means that the left operand to compose is not an array. It is a derived function, made of another function, which must be bound to each for compose to work. The fourth symbol is right brace, which marks the end of a dynamic function. Scanning left until we reach its matching left brace, we get the function the next symbol is a function, up arrow, and it is not bound to the left brace. So the entire line, except for the leftmost character, up arrow, is the rightmost function of the ATOP. The only symbol left, up arrow, is the other function, and this line constitutes the definition of a two-train function, an ATOP. This can be seen as, this is the first function, this is the second function, and they constitute the ATOP. But what does it do? Well, let's have a better look at P2. This is a dynamic function bound to each as left operand to compose and with IOTA as the right operand. P2's argument, n, is given to IOTA, generating a series of n integers each of which is fed to the dynamic function one by one because of each, making effectively n separate calls to the dynamic function. Let's have a look at that dynamic function in more details. Reading from right inside the dynamic function, comma is the first function encountered, but the object to its left is bound to the power operator, so comma is monadic. It is the ravel function. It turns the scalar 1 to its right into a one-element vector containing the number 1. The power operator only accepts functions as left operand. So what's in parentheses to its left it better be a function or we'll get a syntax error. What's when parentheses and omega constitute the function applied to comma 1? In the dynamic function, this function is applied omega times to comma 1. We could rewrite P2 like this. Let's have a look at f more closely. It's a fork, a train of three functions. This is the first function. It is comma, or catenate, bound to zero via the compose operator. It is a function that concatenates zero after its argument. Operators bind their arguments before the functions can make up trains. This is a rule which did not exist before because trains of functions did not exist then. It is preceded by another function not bound to anything, plus. Plus is preceded by another function made of zero, bound to catenate via the compose operator again. It is a function that concatenates zero before its argument. The function f is a three-function train. In this case, it is a fork. Applying this function once to comma 1 yields 1 1. It is the same as or applying this function twice to comma 1 is the same as or and applying the function thrice to comma 1 is the same as this or this. Going back to the original function this is a train of two functions, which again can be seen as p2 applied to an integer, for example 4, in origin 0, gives us 
or or applying P1 mix with QuadML1 to this array results in and going back to the original function this is the Pascal triangle it generates the Pascal triangle values